Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a minimal intro animation inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you don't want to create this entire animation from scratch, then you can check the link in the description. You can download it as a DRFX file. It's going to look something like this. It's a DRFX or DRFX extension, which you can just double click. Uh, if I do that right now, it's going to ask me to overwrite because I have already installed it right over here. So for you, it will say install, just install it. And then you will be able to see under effects, you will have a folder called motion effect fix. And then inside you will have this animation. Now to use this animation, you will need a adjustment clip, drag and drop it. And then on this adjustment clip, you will use the intro animation, just simply drag and drop it. Great. So let's just delete this. This is our intro animation. Let's see what we have over here in the inspector under effects. We have all these controls over here. I can expand the logo, click on browse and browse for a different logo. If the size is too small or too big, I can control that right over here. And then we have the text section. We can change the both the text over here like so. And then you can change the font and everything right over here. Uh, you can change the font weight, the color of the font. Um, let's pick a different color. You can change the size of that text. You can change the position as well. And you can do the same thing with the bottom text. Then we have the box color. We can change the color of that box. Uh, we can change the drop shadow logo. You can increase the intensity of the shadow change the angle, change the distance, change the amount of blur. And then we have the reflection. You can see at the bottom, we have a um, shadow at the bottom. We can enable that on and off and you can also control the blend. Then we have the background color, which is set to a gradient color by default. You can even set to a solid color. That is completely your choice. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, how the template will look. Link is given in the description. You can go ahead and download it and use it inside of your projects. But now let me show you how you can uh, create this animation. Uh, for that, you have to go to effects and uh, drag in a blank fusion composition. Let's go to the fusion page where we will be creating this animation. I'm going to start with the S rectangle node. Click on add. And for the S rectangle, we also need a S render. Click on add. We take a look at it this is how it's going to look if we go to this rectangle we can change the width and the height so i'm going to connect the width with the height slider over here so i'm going to right click on width expression and just link it with the height like so now we can use the height to control both width and the height now you can also go ahead and change the color in the style tab over here you can pick any color over here let's just use this color for now you can use any shape that you want instead of this rectangle you can use a s I think there's a S star as well. Click on add. And if I just view this, this is how it's going to look. You can use a star shape. Um, you, you know, your choice, whatever you want to do. Although we can use the S rectangle over here, uh, but there is a limitation with the colors over here. We can only apply a, a solid color to this. If you want to apply a grading color, then I would advise you to use a background node. So if I just drag and drop it and change the color real quick. And uh, this is our background node. I can add in a, a rectangle mask to this and just resize and create our, um, you know, square shape like so. So you have the option for the gradient and, you know, you can just pick any color real quick. You can change the gradient color. You don't have this option in the, in the S rectangle, right? So if you're going to use a gradient color, then I'll recommend you to use the background node but let's just delete this we are going to use the simple s render over here now i'm just going to drag in a logo real quick so i have it on my second monitor here let me just find it real quick this is our logo and rename this to logo as well and i can simply connect it up with this s render let's take a look at this merge one can see our logo on top and I can use this merge one to scale the logo down. Actually, uh, let me just show you one more thing real quick. If I just have a, like a bigger 
uh, you know, bigger size merge node over here, you know, size bigger than this square shape. Um, so what I'm going to do is after this logo, I'm going to add in a drop shadow, click on add. And uh, we have this drop shadow over here. And so we can decrease the uh, blur amount. And if I just change the distance, I uh, can notice that it's going to go out of this uh, rectangle shape. It's because it's taking the the bounding box of this merge and not of this shape. So in order to fix this, we can just add in uh, on this merge one. We can set this operator to a top and that should fix it. All right. Um, let's just, um, you know, reset this. That's looking great. Now you can also use a fuse called uh, real shadow. So if I go to workspace scripts under reactor, we have, um, you can open reactor and find a fuse called real shadow by learn now fix. So once you install it, you can delete the old drop shadow here. And after this logo, we are going to add in real shadow. Click on that and you can see how nice your shadows or the drop shadow looks now. You can go ahead and tweak the settings over here, but I think the default values look fire. So yeah, just make sure that it's still a top in the merge one over here. Now you can start animating it. After the merge one, we can add in a transform. Click on add and we can animate the whole thing right at once. So let's just do that. Let's view this transform one. You can see we can now control both the shape and the logo. Create a keyframe. Let's go to frame 20. Actually, let's go to frame 30 and let's just bring this back in the center. So set this to 0 0.5 and then I'm going to move it to the left and rotate it as well. So change the center X like so. Um, make sure that you are doing this at the frame 60. Just um, change the center X like so and rotate it to the left. Like so, make sure that the logo points in the right direction. It should come to the original um, direction. So I'm going to set the angle to 360. Uh, I forgot to create a keyframe, so let's just do that at the 60th frame. Uh, I'm going to make sure that the angle is set to 360. And at the 30th frame, it should be 0. Okay. Now if you take a look at the animation, I'm going to go up and then rotate and also move it to the left. Then you can go to this spline and I'm going to select transform one over here, select displacement, click on this icon that says zoom to fit, click on this icon that says select all, I'm going to hit S to smooth everything out and hit the T key to ease everything into 100 and then I want to select just this handle over here and make sure that this is in a straight line like so. Just make sure it's at 100. And make sure that this right over here is set to 34 for some reason. But we're going to make sure that this is 33. And ease in is at 100. So if you now um, check out the angle as well. Make sure that this is also eased in to 100. Now if you play the animation, it's going to look something like this. Alright. Now what we can do is... Now we can add in some text and add in, connect it up with this merge one, uh, sorry, the transform one. This will result in merge tool. If you view this, this is uh, going to look empty because we need to add some text. All right. So I'm going to write in Acme Inc. This is the name of our company or something. Let's move to six years frame because that is where our animation ends. I'm going to make sure that uh, my text is in a correct position so somewhere out there and increase the size a little bit and you know you can add in another text node as a subtext or a tagline but i'm not going to do that for now and i'm going to just pick the same color as our shape over here and you can also go ahead and copy the real shadow from here and paste it after the text to have a similar kind of shadow on the text let's animate the text real quick All right so for the text what we can do is and start animating it after the 30th frame so i'm going to go move my playhead to the 30th frame create a keyframe on center x and y which you can find under layout center x 
Y and create a same keyframe at the 30th frame. Right, so uh, let's go back to the 30th frame. You can just click on this left arrow. It should jump back to the previous keyframe. I'm going to make sure that this text is on the left side, like so. And then I'm going to click on this icon that says zoom to fit in the spline. And I'm going to select all, hit S, and then ease it into 100. Right, your animation will look something like this. Now we have two problems over here. The first thing is that uh, our text is already visible from the very beginning. We want to hide it. And the second problem is that our text is on top of the logo. Over here, we want it behind the logo. So fix the first problem. We can add in a rectangle mask to our text like so. And on the rectangle node, I'm going to click on invert. And then I'm going to make sure that the text is visible on the right side over here and now if you go to the very first frame you can see that it's it's not visible over there there is a little bit of text over here but we can fix this by adjusting the mask now if you take a look at it you should have a nice animation like this but now our text is on top of this shape but we can easily fix this by selecting our merge tool and change the operator and set this to under now the text will be under the logo or the shape and if we take a look at the animation it should look something like this right so it's still not perfect over here yes we need to change the rectangle mask over here just bring this over here like so do this again yeah that's looking much better uh, but it's gonna get cropped up over here so um you know to really Quickly fix this, I can just go to text over here and just push it to the right a little bit. Right, so that should fix it. Now we can add in a background. So let's just find an, a background node and add it to the merge tool. So result in merge 3, let's view this. And now the background is sitting on top. I can just quickly change the color. And on the merge 3, I can hit Control T or right click, swap inputs. And you should be able to see your uh, logo and the text over here so yeah, then you can pretty much choose any background color that you want I think this looks pretty nice and yeah that is pretty much it that's how you can create this animation let's take a look at this one more time there we have it I can also enable motion blur over here and then you have to go to the I guess you can enable it on the text motion blur and on the transform as well enable motion blur and you can see it in action like so on both of these elements and finally you can connect it up with this media out and your animation would be ready in the edit page as well finally you can which is completely optional you can add in a like a circle wipe transition to this you can add in an ellipse and just connect it to this merge 3 as an input mask. Then you can go to frame 60. This is where our animations end. I'm actually going to go to frame 70 and create a keyframe on width and height. I'm going to again link these two together like so. Create a keyframe on height. Uh, make sure that it is zero at that frame. And then go forward uh, maybe 30 frames, which is frame 100 and increase the height. Make sure it covers our whole, whole comp over here. All right, something like that. And now you're gonna notice that uh, it just masks the text and the logo and not the background. Uh, to fix this, we can go to Merge 3 setting and click on Multiply by Mask. And it should mask all the elements like so. Uh, but then it's gonna, you're gonna notice that uh, we don't have any kind of animation at the beginning. Uh, so for that, we need to click on Apply Mask Inverted. Now we have our logo animation. And then finally, it's going to mask out like so. So that is pretty much it. That's how you can create this animation inside of uh, DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, then please make sure you leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.